Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to BPD Update. I'm Steve Strand, the Chief of Police for the City of Bremerton. And uh, as you can probably see from the person next to me, we're going to talk about uh, something brand new uh, for the City of Bremerton and for our police department. It's a volunteer program called BCAPS, B-C-A-P-S. And you may have seen a little bit about this in the news, or if you ever watch the council meetings, uh, there was a good report on it uh, during the council meeting in the month of April. But we're going to talk a little bit more about it, uh, what it is, what it isn't, uh, how it's going to work, and uh, very, very importantly, we're also going to tell you how you can become involved if you'd like to become a member of our volunteer program called BCAPS here for the City of Bremerton and our Police Department. So to talk about that with us is our coordinator, uh, Tom Danaher. Welcome, Tom. Chief, good morning to you. Uh, good morning. And uh, first of all, I guess the, you know, the, the generic or the, the global question is uh, BCAPS. Um, what is it? Can you talk a little bit about what BCAPS does uh, yeah. for our city? Sure. And I think this is a great opportunity for those looking in to, to learn a little bit more about it. Uh, BCAPS, we, we have to have acronyms everywhere, but this is the Bremerton Citizens Auxiliary Patrol System Series, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's total volunteer. It's a total volunteer system. Uh, about a year ago, uh, Chief Strain and I uh, started talking about this, and uh, uh, we've been putting together uh, some, some good things that, that would, will help our citizens. This is, a, this is an opportunity for folks who uh, want to improve the uh, you know the uh, the way of life around their city to do it through volunteer hours here you actually become uh, a member of uh, the city of Bremerton and and their uh, their organization and and with that then <clears throat> pardon me we'd like to we'd like you to give a minimum of uh, of eight hours a month so our citizens auxiliary patrol um, really uh, I like the I like the term that uh, that you came up with when we were kind of uh, we're working this thing up. This is um, this is the neighborhood watch on steroids. Uh, we're going to have uh, patrols uh, that will be in in cars uh, provided by the uh, police department. Uh, bicycles again provided by the department. Uh, pedestrian patrols, and um, we, we know the areas that uh, we want to uh, be around and and, and near. But there are other areas that are of, of the community that we think that we should be out visiting, like the merchants uh, downtown, ought to know a little bit about us. Uh, sure, uh, we're going to uh, we're going to concentrate on uh, uh, parks, uh, the marina, and, and Bremerton has a number of parks. So this is a city of Bremerton program. If you don't live in the city, we welcome your your enlistment as a volunteer. But our patrols will be basically within the, the city limits of Bremerton and less directed to go out and, and assist uh, uh, something else there. Let me interrupt you for a second. The, uh, the, I think a lot of people have heard about volunteer programs that work with the police department, with the city, like you said, Tom. And um, This is one, and sometimes people will ask me, you know, how big is the police department? The city of Bremerton is roughly 40,000 people. Geographically, very large area. It's one of the larger geographic cities because we go way out almost to Belfair. Um, you know, huge watershed area way out into the, the rural area. Um, and people will say, well, how many police officers do you have working at a time? And sometimes people will say, well, you must have 15, 20 officers on duty at a time. And uh, no, we do not. Uh, we have a total of 59 sworn officers for the entire city. Uh, depending on the time of day, we'll have anywhere between three or four to up to seven or eight or sometimes 10 or more. But um, people are sometimes surprised by how few on duty officers there are. And a volunteer program is a great way to supplement yes. and to add another set yeah. of eyes. And Tom yeah. talked about um, neighborhood watch on steroids, and that's what it is. It's sort of a, a mobile neighborhood watch yeah. uh, that provides an additional set of eyes to, to check things out, to, to interact with people. And uh, it really came, as, as Tom mentioned, um, in sort of conversation that led after uh, um, asking, you know, what, what could people do that want to become involved and, and help out our city? In the city that they're very proud to live in and to and to work with, and uh, that's what brought us to B Caps today. So, yeah. um, you talked, to, you started to talk about this before I interrupted you, Tom. But um, what you know, the parks, marinas, what are the other areas that our volunteers will be looking at? Well, we know that uh, we have a number of uh, vacant homes in the city. And Chief, I, I do, I do want to add that uh, until I got into this program and started looking at the layout of the city limits. Uh, I really, uh, 
I thought, holy smoke, uh, you know, I'm hoping I get a lot of volunteers because we've got a lot of territory to cover. And, you know, as we grow, we hope to maybe even come up with two vehicles if we can, if we have the, uh, the demand, maybe, maybe even more than that. So we go back to uh, the, some areas of concentration. Uh, uh, parks, marinas, um, some of the school areas, uh, the uh, retail area, vacant homes, and then we're, we also have a the availability through the through the police department's website to uh, have discrete uh, sign-ups for vacation home checks where um, you the viewer could could come in log in discreetly tell uh, tell us where uh, what where and when you're going on vacation and we will come and check your house no one will know that you're you're gone we don't broadcast that but that's that's a luxury and a new program that we're going to offer and we hope in the future then maybe we can do some other things like assist with parades assist with blackberry festival uh, do some things such as that and that's a there's there's occasionally you'll see a police department that will offer the service of vacation checks uh, let's say a person's going to go on vacation for a week or 10 days and just to have somebody stop by and check and make sure everything looks okay yeah. you know check the doors make sure nobody's broken in or mm -hmm. there hasn't been vandalism or something like that most departments do not have near the resources to do that including ours but with this program, uh, we're looking at offering that availability. So it's not a guarantee that someone would check, but it's just an additional uh, little bit of sense of security and have somebody stop by and check your, your home. And Tom mentioned uh, that the, uh, you can do it discreetly because obviously being a public agency, people's concern is, well, if I tell somebody that I'm going on vacation, is that gonna, are other people gonna become aware of it if somebody came in and found that out publicly? So obviously we keep that private. Um, so there's a lot of different things that volunteers would become involved in. Um, what isn't BCAPS? What isn't this volunteer program? Because sometimes people have this vision of, well, gee, I'm sort of, uh, sort of like an auxiliary patrol officer, a police officer. What is this program not? Uh, excellent question. We've, uh, we've worked real hard on a handbook that will be the, uh, the real basis for, for training. We're gonna, before we, any of these folks uh, go on patrol, uh, they're gonna be, a recipient of a, of a lot of training from in-house. We're not police. We're, we do no law enforcement work. And for those of you that were curious, um, we won't engage anyone. If we, if we are engaged, our, our policy will be to understand and, and back off. And if we think the situation uh, could be confrontational, we would call for assistance. Uh, we are strictly another set of eyes and ears uh, for the police department and law enforcement here within the city limits. That's it. And one of the questions that I'm sure, I know you've gotten, Tom, and I've gotten from people too, is, well, are we going to carry a weapon? The answer is no. Or can I carry a weapon if I have a concealed carry permit? The answer is no. Uh, we are not looking for the BCAPS volunteers to become, again, uh, uh, involved in any kind of deadly force or any kind of force at all. Uh, with with residents and citizens and so this is really very specifically uh, outlined in our policies and what our expectations are um, walk through us a little bit Tom what a typical day would be and sort of what the hours would be if a person might be interested in doing this uh, daytime nighttime by themselves uh, and and what would they be doing in a typical day well uh, our patrols will be between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. daylight only and, and until we get uh, real, really into this and maybe a little better at it, there'll be no patrol solo. Uh, everybody will have a partner with them. You can sign up with a partner. Uh, maybe two folks want to uh, do this. Uh, we'll provide you with these, uh, w w with a, a uniform shirt. Very this, sharp and natty, yeah. by the way. <laughs> Please volunteer, and there's a reason for this, because let's say that you and I are on patrol in Lions Park or one of the mm -hmm. parks, and we needed assistance. Well, we'd like to be able to be seen, mm -hmm. and we think that, 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 that an officer coming uh, to assist uh, the situation would be able to pick us out. So. You'll, you, our headquarters are over on Lebo Boulevard. We're, we're here today, of course, in the police department, but we're gonna work out of the parks uh, building over on Lebo. We'll keep our vehicles over there. And uh, so you check in there, you'd, uh, you'd log your time in because all of your cumulative time, you can get little awards uh, via the city for volunteer time. Uh, at that point, then you'd, you'd get your assignment for patrol. Here's an ideal. 
let's say today we're going to go on four hours of patrol and we're partners. So the first hour uh, for you two gents, I'd like you to work retail. I'd like you to walk up and down the streets uh, downtown or maybe uh, an area such as Callow. Introduce yourself to the merchants, leave a business card. Uh, and then explain the program. E explain right. the program right. to them and we're always looking for volunteers. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll go with enough volunteers we could go all of daylight hours Mm -hmm. five to six days a week wouldn't mm -hmm. that be great mm -hmm. um, right now we have about 14 volunteers um, you'd you'd probably get a list of vacant homes then mm -hmm. you'd go check the vacant homes and the police have ha, are going to train us on how we go around and look mm -hmm. in in and around that vacant home and if I could just interrupt on yeah. the and the reason we're checking vacant homes is we have problems with vandalism people breaking in people squatting uh, people that are criminal vagrants maybe sometimes getting into those homes and it's it's also really helps out our department in terms of keeping a good track on that and making sure we can uh, uh, keep crime down by making sure that if they're in there we can do something about it with the landlord so I just want yeah. to explain that and and for our group uh, were we to find some folks in a vacant home uh, we we <laughs> We'll back away and, right. uh, and, right. and, 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 and call for assistance. So we would probably do a number of those. Uh, you'd be surprised how fast four hours goes by. And then you report, uh, you know, take the vehicle or bicycles, whatever you're with that day, back to the LIBO office, sign your log out. Um, everywhere that we go, we'll, and of course it's all in this training manual, uh, we keep a little log of who we've encountered, um, you know what we encountered maybe maybe part of our assignment that day would be it's a summer day mm -hmm. and it's a Friday and we want to have a walk through Lions Park mm -hmm. okay we'll, we'll meet and greet the people mm -hmm. uh, that's that's really uh, what we are we're citizens patrol just just some folks out uh, doing some, just visiting and doing some non-police work that uh, we think will make a difference in our community. And a lot of what uh, you're describing, Tom, is, is interacting with people. A lot of it is, is going to be involved in parks. Yeah. Uh, and as you mentioned, we are a community with a lot of parks, a lot of very large parks. Evergreen Park is heavily used, Lions Park. We also have Forest Ridge Park, which is giant and has a lot of trails. And so there'll be a lot of interaction in parks, which again is a great opportunity to get out there whether it be in a vehicle on bikes, if volunteers want to get involved with bikes, we'll get them on bikes that we'll supply, mm -hmm. and, or on foot if that's what they choose to do. Great way to stay in shape and you know, get in shape and stay in shape. Um, and you can't see it, but on, on the back of Tom's uniform, it says volunteer. So again, it's a very visible uniform just so people know what it is. It's associated with us, but we don't want people to be confused as police officers because of the safety issue. And um, a police radio, we'll have a police radio for each volunteer to carry so that if anything happens they can reach a, a law enforcement officer as well as a cell phone so that they can be in contact with us as well as our dispatch center both through the phone and the cell phone. So again that's part of that officer safety element. Um, it's something that I think is going to be a tremendous resource yeah. for our department and before we talk about um, you know anyone can apply to be a volunteer. I mean we're not restricting it to certain groups but there are certain groups that we're sort of trying to leverage because this community has a group of retired folks that we want to leverage and really take uh, sort of take advantage of their skills. Talk a little bit if you can about your background uh, before you became uh, involved with our volunteer program. Well, well uh, good point there. Mm -hmm. I'm retired uh, um, military, retired U.S. Navy and, um, and I, I know that we have a lot of uh, retired service members, uh, men and women, in our area. Well, that's a, that's a wonderful, we're hopeful that that'll be a wonderful resource for us. Uh, they understand structure, uh, they, 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 they've worn the uniform, and they, they understand the mission we're in. And remember, we're a supplemental force uh, that's unarmed, non-aggressive. Uh, we have radios, that's our communication, that's really our defense. And, um, and, and we're volunteers. We're citizens, volunteers to assist uh, uh, in this case, the police department. So uh, I, I thought uh, what, once I retired a couple of times, I thought, well, this, you know, we were chatting about this once, and uh, I said, this is something that uh, I think would be worthwhile. Plus, it's, uh, it's, it, it's very, very interesting uh, once you, you get into it and, and, and do the reading and find out, you know, how many parks we have on maybe over 40 and uh, how big the city limits are. And, 
and we, we, uh, uh, we went to a couple of other communities that have these programs, were well received, and we talked to them. I rode on some patrols in uh, other communities. Uh, they're very positive. Those folks uh, feel like they're making a difference, and I, I think our program will even be better than theirs. We're really looking forward to having some success with this. And you mentioned, uh, uh, again, leveraging particularly retired military. We have a lot of retired uh, Navy personnel, Marines, uh, all the different services in our community. So it is not restricted only to them. But again, we just sort of talk about that because well, it's an it area is that we because have. we are who we are. Yeah. But yeah. We, the, you know, maybe the only restriction might be uh, Chief Strain is we do want you to be am you know be amble. You, yeah. You're going to have to get out and walk yeah. a while. Or you're going to have to climb steps. Or you you may you're 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 going to have to be able to to get out and move around. You just don't cru get to cruise around in a car and 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 sit with binoculars. We, we won't be doing that. We'll be engaging the citizens. And, uh, and being part of the community because we are. And uh, so again, anyone can apply. Um, Tom is, is humble, uh, as are many of our retired uh, military, when he says, well, I'm retired U.S. Navy. What he doesn't say is that he was the captain of the USS Rainier and served our Navy for a very long time in a lot of very important positions. And it speaks to the quality of the individuals we have in our community. And again, the fact that they want to continue to provide service like Tom. And we have, again, I think we have many others and that's something that we would like to work with. Um, so, and by the way, before I forget to say, thank you for your service uh, to our country. Um, as we finish up, the most important question for viewers is if they want to become involved or maybe they know somebody who wants to become involved, where do they get more information and how do they sign up? You, you know, the city of Bremerton has a, has a really uh, unique website and uh, in there is a key that is for police department. So then you go to that button and you'll see a, 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 a icon or a little button that says a volunteer application. Go right on in there, uh, fill out that application. If you live or, or uh, near me or nowhere, uh, you know, and, and I'm in and out of the office here, I have hard copy applications if you'd like one, uh, you, you, I can give one to you, but it's really made it very, very easy for you. Uh, we'll check your driver's license, uh, give you a little background check, uh, again, uh, supply you with uh, uh, a pretty cool outfit that you'll have to turn back in when your, ter <laughs> when your term's over. But keep in mind, and, and one last, one mm -hmm. last uh, a chip in here, Chief. Uh, the, the eight hours a month are, are what we ask for for the minimum. We just don't want you to sign up and try this and go, well, that was pretty cool, but I can check that off my bucket list. Uh, <clears throat> we're in this for the long haul. Uh, this is really a worthwhile uh, uh, program. And, uh, you know, I, I would like to see folks sign up for a couple of years. Uh, the coordinator that, that I am uh, fulfilling the role now, this would be a one-year deal. And then I'm hoping somebody else would take that and we'll see how their management and, uh, and skills will go. This is our basis. It's really a good book. The police department's helped us write it. Uh, we've mirrored it from some other communities. I think we're off to a good start and we're looking for some volunteers and this is a great opportunity with community television to advertise it. Very good. And I wanna thank you for uh, your work on this so far, Tom, and your work as it continues into the future. And again, for your uh, offering the service to our community. So, a uh, great new program. Uh, information's on our website, or let one of us know. And uh, we'll be right back after this. Well, I uh, often say on BPD Update that I hate to throw too many numbers at you, but it gives you a good idea of what trends are, and it's a good idea for, or it's a good, it's a good way to sort of relate to you. Uh, what's going on around our community in terms of specific cases and calls that we're dealing with. And it's also just a good metric. We talk a lot about frequent flyers and our focus on frequent flyers at the Bremerton Police Department. We also talk a lot about the things that we're doing. And uh, in our business and in the public sector in general, sometimes people avoid metrics, they avoid measurement. And uh, we wanna show you some measurements so that we can keep track of what's going on. And, and again, talk about that and be transparent about that. So let's start with some statistics from March of 2015, that's the last month for which we have statistics. And if, as you look at these columns, to, from left to right, you're looking at the month of March 2013, then 14, and then 15. So the far right column is the most recent, uh, uh, the most recent data. Uh, looking at the top, let's look at reports. This is the number of reports taken by our entire department in the month of March. 
And it's not a perfect analog for crime, but it's a pretty good indicator. Generally speaking, the fewer reports we have, that's a good thing. It simply means that something happened that we had to take a report on. So again, generally speaking, fewer is better. And uh, back in 2013, we were always well over 1,000 reports a month, almost always. And then as the trend has really gone down, we hardly ever hit 1,000 a month anymore. And we're usually down even in the 800s. And you can see there that last year in March of 14, we were in 927. And in March of 15, we are in 864. That has been trending downward for the last two years. Number of arrests has also been trending downwards. And I can tell you it's not for lack of trying. It's not for lack of being proactive. Our officers are out there working very hard. But the number of arrests have been trending downward month to month for the last uh, about year and a half. And again, generally, that's a good thing because, again, I think it's an indicator or a metric that uh, working on those frequent flyer focus areas is, is working for us. And you can see that the arrests were down to 179 for the month of March 2015. Domestic violence calls were at 19, a uh, relatively stable number uh, in the month of March for the last three years. DUIs, uh, 23 two years ago, uh, 12 in March of 2014, 5 in the month of, in the month of March 2015. That's a factor of a lot of different things. Uh, it is possible that there are fewer drunk drivers out there. I don't know if that's true or not. It's also true that we have a smaller traffic unit than we used to. We used to have more, de more officers dedicated to specific traffic enforcement. We don't have that anymore because of resource cuts. And I would also tell you, it's, this is an honest answer, um, DUI enforcement is down statewide. Uh, part of that is because there have been so many recent uh, changes in law and case law that has made it much, much more difficult to enforce DOI law. Uh, another way to say that, and I, it's not a good thing to say, but the defense attorneys in some ways have won. And our legislature has made it increasingly difficult to enforce DOI laws. I think that's, that's my editorial comment, but I think that has to change. And we've communicated that with Mothers Against Drunk Driving and Target Zero and other groups that I think are going to take that up, start to make some changes. Uh, finally, on this screen, I just want to show you mental health calls. You can see 16 in March of 2015, but that is calls specifically for mental health. The fact is, and, and we talk about this a lot, mental health is related to a lot of calls we deal with and a lot of crimes we deal with. So that number is really not uh, indicative of how frequently we deal with people with, uh, with mental health issues. Let's look at the next uh, set of data here uh, for frequent flyer focus areas. So these are our frequent flyers. If you watch the show regularly, I talk about it all the time. You're probably sick of me talking about it. But this is where we try to focus our efforts. Property offenders that are frequently running into law enforcement. These are the people, these are crime machines, the wind up toys. You uh, turn the crank, you put them down on the ground, they run off and they keep committing crimes. Uh, and they run into us 100 times, 200 times, in and out of jail all the time, usually uh, drug dependent and often have mental health issues. And they are causing constant problems with property crime in neighborhoods. We're trying to focus on those folks. Uh, you can see that uh, these are, and these are the crimes, by the way, that are most frequently associated with our frequent flyers. So let's, let's take a look at the last three years for trespassing. Uh, you can see 25 in March of 2015, up a little bit from last year. Thefts uh, is consistent from last year at 53. This is misdemeanor theft, by the way, but that's down from two years ago. You can see that vehicle theft was at 10. Those numbers have been relatively consistent the last three years. This is a good number, residential burglary was at 12 for the month of March 2015. That is down substantially from last year. Residential burglary is a very violating crime. It's a huge violation of your privacy and just your, your uh, uh, sense of, of well-being when somebody burglarizes a home. And so to get, to get that number down is something that's very important. Non-residential burglary, which is generally commercial burglary, also down to eight from 21 the year before. Vehicle prowling was down a little bit to six. You can see that shoplifting was down substantially. In fact, we cut it in half compared to the same month last year. A lot of that is because a lot of our ship shoplifting is uh, liquor from stores since liquor was privatized and put into private stores. We've been working with stores to sort of harden the target and make it harder to do. And that's been, uh, it's been going in a better direction. DWLS is driving while license suspended. These are suspended drivers driving around. You can see that that number was up in March of this year. And then malicious mischief, very consistent between those three years. A couple quick things before I finish up. Uh, this is a, a, a quick uh, snapshot of Officer Matt Strombach. He's our school resource officer that works at the Bremerton High School and at our middle schools. One of the things that we've been doing along with uh, some members of our command staff is occasionally going out and we have uh, Starbucks uh, in East Bremerton that actually donates hot chocolate and coffee and pastries and we bring those out to our, our crossing guards that are out there every day 
uh, uh, spending their time for, our, uh, for the safety of our kids in a lot of really tough weather when it's raining and sleeting and cold. And they're out there every day in a, in a difficult job uh, making sure that our kids are safe. And so uh, you can see here that Matt is out uh, bringing them some, uh, some hot chocolate and some, some coffee. And then we take over. We let them go and enjoy that while we actually act as the crossing guards. And again, it's just a very, very small way for us to say thank you to, uh, to that staff uh, that works with the Bremerton School District and with us. And we certainly appreciate all that they do. Last thing, uh, the second to last thing I wanted to show you was a couple of photos here from the St. Patrick's Day Parade in March. Uh, this is Officer uh, Garrity on the left and Officer S uh, Spencer Burnson on the right. Uh, great parade. Uh, everybody had a great time. We had no problems out there and our officers were on bikes. Uh, they decided that they wanted to make sure that they got pictures with the Guinness guy. So mission accomplished and there's a couple of photos for us. And then finally, I've talked a little bit the last couple months about our Fuzz Fund. You'll see that some Bremerton officers, our policies, we don't allow officers to have beards or goatees. But uh, we allow it if they put in $20 a month for the Fuzz Fund, which is a charitable fund. And then we rotate it around and each officer gets, uh, depending on when their month comes up, gets to choose where we donate that money uh, through the Fuzz Fund. And, and $290 in March went to the Holly Ridge Center, which is a group here in Bremerton that works with the developmentally disabled adults and kids. And that was uh, donated by J Officer Jason Vertife. You can see that he's here uh, giving the giant check to the uh, representative from the Holly Ridge Center. So a great cause. And again, we appreciate Officer Vertife uh, thinking of them. Uh, just a few things that are going, around, going on around the uh, Bremerton Police Department. Uh, BPD Update is all about letting you know what we're doing, getting feedback from you, and being transparent about our department and where we're going. Uh, going back to the beginning of the show, BCAPS, our new volunteer program, just a reminder, go to our police website. All the information's there, and you can also apply on our police website. Till next time. Thanks for joining us on BPD Update.